Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to Monday morning, uh, the 29th of March, as we join together this morning to read God's Word. Just thought I'd do a different location this morning, so forgive me if the camera shakes a little bit of time just with where I'm sitting. I wonder if anyone can spot whereabouts and strain I am this morning. But let's read God's Word, first of all, as we read together John chapter 16. I have told you these things so that you wouldn't abandon your faith, for you will be expelled from the synagogues, and the time is coming when those who kill you will think that they are doing a holy service for God. This is because they have never known the Father or me. Yes, I am telling you these things now, so that when they happen, you will remember my warning. I didn't tell you earlier because I was going to be with you a while longer. But now I'm going away to the one who sent me. And no one, and not one of you is asking where I am going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you um, that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because of the ruler of, the, of this world has already been judged. Therefore, it is so much more I want to tell you, but I cannot bear it now, but you cannot bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. I will, he will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I say the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. In a little while you won't see me anymore, but a little while after that you will see me again. Some of the disciples asked each other, what does he mean when he says, in a little while you won't see me, but then you will see me, and I am going to the Father? And what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand. Jesus realized they wanted to ask him about it, so he said, are you asking yourselves what um, I meant? I said, in a little while you won't see me, but a little while after that you will see me again. I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. It will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor. When her child is born, her anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. So you have sorrow now. But I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one can rob you of that joy. At that time, you won't ask me for anything. I tell you the truth. You will ask the Father directly, directly and he will grant your request because you use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name and you will receive and you will have abundant joy. I have spoken on these matters in figures of speech. But soon I will stop speaking figuratively. I will tell you plainly all about the Father. Then you will ask in my name. I'm not saying I will ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you dearly because you love me and believe that I came from God. Yes, I came from the Father into the world and now I will leave the world and return to the Father. Then his disciples said, at last you're speaking plainly and not figuratively. Now we understand that you know everything and there's no need to question you. From this we believe that you did, that you came from God. Jesus asked, do you finally believe? But the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when you will be scattered. Each one of you is going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome the world. Amen. 
Most of that is Jesus speaking just before he gets arrested, before he goes to be crucified. It's amazing just how he speaks. And it's only at the end of that chapter that his disciples say that they finally understand, they finally believe what Jesus is talking about. It's taken them all this time to realize who he is and what he's saying. But it's really interesting. Jesus, before this, has mentioned about the Holy Spirit. And again, he says about the Holy Spirit. But it's the fact that he has to go for the Holy Spirit to come. While Jesus is on earth, the Holy Spirit cannot be spread out over the whole world, out over all the believers, all who follow Christ. It's only whenever he goes that that can happen. So it's hard in one way. Jesus doesn't want to leave the disciples, and yet he knows there's so much more for them whenever he does go because they will receive the Spirit. And he's trying to get them to understand that. And it's what the Holy Spirit does for us. Verses 13 and 14, we, we realize that the Holy Spirit helps to guide us, shows us what Jesus wants, what God wants. And verse 23 it's a reason why we pray in Jesus' name. It says in verse 23, um, I tell you the truth, you will ask the Father directly and he will grant you your request because you use my name. So if you ever wonder why whenever we pray in church, we say in Jesus' name we pray, there's your answer. Because Jesus tells us that we ask in his name and we pray in his name and the Father hears us and answers us. You know, at the start of a week, it's so important at the start of a week, the best way to start the week is by talking to God in prayer, telling him your concerns for this week, your excitement for this week, your hopes for this week, everything that's going on, and let him know how you're feeling. And when you bring your request to him, realizing that we ask in Jesus' name, and that because we ask in Jesus' name, he hears us and he answers us. Now, like we said to the boys and girls a few weeks ago, the answer is not always what we want, because it's in God's will, but we know that he does hear us and that he does answer us. Let's pray together. Father, thank you again for today. Thank you for another, start of another week, whenever we can come and worship you and serve you. A week, Father, when particularly we remember the, the journey of Christ, your son to the cross, to be our savior, to bring us salvation. Lord, this week, we ask that you would help us and equip us Help us to be bold in our interactions that we have, whether on screen, on telephone, or if we do happen to see anyone in person. Bold that we, through our actions, declare you as Lord and as you as God. Lord, as in our speech, help us to say clearly if someone asks us why we believe, what this is all about. About how your son came at Easter time. And Lord, for those people who, for Easter is just a time to receive and give chocolate, Lord, may you bring them to a realization that they need you. And may they reach out. And may somebody from your family, one of us, Lord, be able to talk to them, to show them, to answer those questions, that your spirit can work in their lives, Lord, that more people would turn to you. So, Lord, today we hand over to you the challenges that we face. We give you thanks for all your goodness. I ask that you be with us, for it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Thanks, folks, for joining in this morning. Great to have you online. And um, for those of you who are trying to figure it out, yes, I am sitting upstairs in the balcony. So take care. God bless. See you again tomorrow morning. Bye for now.